Do you like losing money? Because if you do, you should click off as today I'm going to go through another three mistakes I've done in my sports card investing and collecting journey, which you should be avoiding. What's going on guys? Matt here, back again with another video. Episode two of a series that I hope never gets another video. If you haven't seen part one, I will link it in the description below. These three mistakes cost me hundreds, if not thousands of potential profit, as well as actual money. Being in the sports card hobby full-time for a couple of years, as well as being a content creator, might leave you guys thinking that every move I make is the best one. But we have to be realistic here. Everyone makes mistakes and we do have to learn from them. I think it's important because we look at sports card content creators, including myself, and a lot of the content is centered around flipping to make money. It's easy to find focus on the positives, but it's equally as important to focus on the negatives as well. It's time to be vulnerable and open myself up and reveal another three mistakes I've done. And some are more relevant for sports card collectors and some are more relevant for sports card investors. So mistake number one is having diamond hands and holding a sports card too long. And what I mean by that is trying to time your selling at a high point to maximize profit. Now this mistake is more catered towards your sports card flippers and your short term sports card investors. Really, to be honest, we can never predict the market and there are key points in terms of buying and selling, but the market is evolving every day. A key example of this is at the start of the season, you're wanting to invest in a young player like Luka Doncic. Luka has a great run of games in the first half of the season and his price goes up 50%. You have a large collection of Luka Doncic cards that you can cash out for 50%, but in your mind, you do see this as the beginning of a large season to come. In fact, rarely does a card ever go up and up and up throughout the course of a whole season, and it's normal for it to have dips and rises. You might even think that typically because the prices are higher during the playoffs, it's better to hold until then and then sell at a high point. But that's the risk though. Why take a risk holding into the playoffs when you have other factors in play like injuries as well as the market potentially dropping? There shouldn't be an issue in taking profit because what do people normally do when they do sell off a card? They end up repurchasing or reinvesting the money used from that profit. And this is my main point with this mistake and it's the importance of staying liquid. When I speak about liquidity, it means how easily the investment can be sold for cash and the ability to have cash reserves. Now, why should you be liquid when it comes to sports card investing and even collecting? We've all seen those Facebook posts where people People are saying sale to fund a PC card or sale to fund grading costs. Staying liquid means you have that ability to buy that PC card or pay for those grading costs when needed rather than waiting two to three days and losing that opportunity. Just imagine your holy grail popped up on eBay and you ended up having to sell off your cards and then by the time you sold off and you tried to buy the card, it was already gone. It's absolutely gut-wrenching. If you have the opportunity to make money by selling a card to stay liquid, I'm all for it because potentially you could be getting a PC card. If you're trying to perfectly time your cards to get the most money out of them, you could potentially be waiting a long time. And even if you did sell the card, you're probably going to be pondering over it and seeing whether you sold the card at the right time or not. I'll go through an example where it did work out very well for me earlier this year. So I'd actually gotten some Trey Young PSA 10s from grading around January this year, and I was actually quite hesitant in selling them because I wanted to hold until the playoffs. Needing some quick money, I ended up selling all of them, and I'll use the Optic PSA 10 as an example, which I ended up selling for $460 Aussie. Fast forward until now, and it currently goes to $250 Aussie, and the price is actually around the same as during the playoffs where Trey Young ended up playing well. So as you can see, a $210 difference in profit where I was able to use that money to buy some more cards. In summary, don't focus on timing to maximize profit and do try to stay liquid as much as you can so you can buy some more cards. Mistake number two, and that's buying internationally and paying international shipping as well as the other fees included. This mistake is a little bit more relevant to my Australian friends as we have a smaller market over here. The USA market is huge and you're able to find some really nice cards a little bit more easily over there. If you're not from America and you've gone onto eBay USA, you've probably found the card that you do want and scroll down and you end up seeing that there's a $30 shipping fee in itself. On top of a shipping fee, you also have an import tax to pay as well. I'll give an example here. Before the NFL season last year, I was super keen to add a Deshaun Watson Prism card to my own collection. A card I really wanted was his rookie Prism Silver graded PSA 9, which was going for $345 US at the time. So I ended up buying the card and shipping here and I expected to pay around $490 Aussie, which accounts for the $30 in shipping. But then I looked at my bank statement and saw I was charged not only a shipping fee, but also an import tax as well as an overseas card fee, which totaled $550 Aussie. So on top of a card I'm already paying a fair bit of money on, I've generated another $60 in fees. Now you might think $60 on top of a $490 card isn't that much, but it really does add up and it happens to me a fair few times. My mindset was literally the fact that because I was paying big money for the card, that an extra $50 to $100 wasn't really that much. But in reality, with flippers, you're trying to maximize profit as much as you can. So $50 to $60 behind market value is already a lot to make up on. I'm estimating this 
mistake to cost me around five to six hundred dollars as I used to buy a lot of nice cards from the US and ship here individually. Now to combat this mistake, I do highly recommend a freight forwarding service and my personal choice is Ship My Cards who I'm not affiliated with but I will link down below. So basically what you can do with Ship My Cards is that you can use their address to ship your cards to and they can store in their warehouse. And this is important because you are saving on shipping because standard shipping in America is around four dollars while shipping from the USA to Australia is around thirty dollars. You can then collate all of your purchases and ship here all at once which does save you money on shipping and other fees. Now this mistake doesn't just stay relevant for sports card investors but also for collectors. Imagine finding that PC card and then paying an extra hundred dollars for it. There's definitely better use for your money. Now the last mistake that I'm going to be running through today is thinking the narrative will remain the same. This mistake sort of ties in with my first mistake in that sometimes we do think that we can predict the sports card market in the future. I have to out myself here because I even did a five tips for sports card collectors video. One of my tips was essentially to learn the market cycle and time your buying and selling according to the point in the season. I didn't give this out blindly because in the 2019-20 season this actually did work out really well with players like Jamal Murray and Donovan Mitchell in the playoffs. So I do think I had some merit there there, but you do have to look at extrinsic factors as well. We're going through a global pandemic and everyone's money situation can be altered in a quick flash. Now I know us Aussies have gone through lockdown after lockdown and the first thing that we think of when these sort of things happen is how we generate our money. Say we're getting closer to the playoffs and people's expectations of cards are that they're about to go up and then the lockdown happens out of nowhere. People aren't going to be thinking about their sports cards as much when they're struggling with their money. I think we just have to be careful in saying things like sell your cards during the playoffs because they'll be at a high point because we we really can't predict the extrinsic factors at play. The market in reality is getting smarter day by day because we do have content creators including myself saying to sell here and buy here. We have to understand that we can't predict everything as much as we used to anymore. I mean looking back who would have thought the current peak of the sports card market was February 2021. If you look at that month specifically there wasn't anything special other than the Super Bowl and the NFL. I wouldn't fault you if during that period you had extreme optimism for the NBA playoffs because the market was really hot at an unusual time. An example of this was me being extremely optimistic for the Miami Heat in the regular season even though they didn't play well. Again, thinking the narrative would remain the same, I thought Miami would turn up in the playoffs like they did in the previous season and play well. In doing so, I bought a bunch of Bam and a buyer rookies thinking that he would copy his performance from the previous playoffs. But they lost a key role player in Jay Crowder and second year player Tyler Hero wasn't even able to replicate his past playoff performances. In reality, they got swept early, Bam's prices fell off a cliff and it's just really on me not analysing the situation at hand. To summarise mistake number three, analyse the situation at hand and don't think that anything is a given in the sports card market whether you've had success in it or not. Thank you for making it to the end. I really do hope you gained some value from my own mistakes. Comment down below any mistakes you guys have been doing. I really do appreciate you guys taking the time to check out my channel and my video. Please do leave a like and hit the subscribe button as always and I'll see you all in future videos. Take care.